Hello, hello guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's bloody good episode, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's go, eh? Let's do it. Posted by user, Major Artist 340 titled, Am I the asshole here for not offering to pay for my husband and his kids, leading him to spend all his savings? For a while now, my husband John has been getting more and more angry over little things and generally moody and distant. I finally had enough and approached him about separation. This conversation led to a big blowout and him revealing the state of his finances. My husband and I have always kept our finances separate. Also, although we call each other husband and wife and had a wedding, we're not actually legally married. This was primarily for inheritance purposes because we have older children from previous relationships. Anyways, John revealed that he had basically no savings left, that all the money he had saved for retirement and for his kids' schooling was gone. Furthermore, he said that it was all my fault since he used all his savings to try and keep up with my lifestyle. There was never anything crazy in terms of bills or anything like that, and we always split it all equally. The house we live in, I own outright, so there wasn't a mortgage payment. However, I've always liked to travel on a lot of fairly extravagant vacations. I would invite John or John and his children to join on trips, but never made them feel like they had to come. That said, he was expected to pay for himself and for his kids. Except for recently, he accepted every invitation. I would also give my kids things he considered extravagant, but I considered normal so he felt like he had to give similar things to his own kids. John said with all the spending to keep up, his savings dwindled very fast. I expressed that I couldn't understand how or why he would spend all he had when he knew that he couldn't afford it. He said it was like he was keeping up with the Joneses, only worse because it was at home, so he couldn't block it out. John thinks that since I knew his job, I should have had a basic understanding of his finances and realized this wasn't a lifestyle he could maintain, that the kind thing would have been to offer to pay for the trips and other things instead of dangle them in front of him and his kids' faces. Looking back, I probably could have realized that this spending didn't make sense for his salary, but I wasn't thinking about it. I don't think it was my responsibility to keep his finances in mind here. We had agreed from the beginning to keep our finances separate, so to me, that means paying for things separately. Edit, we do not live in a state with common law marriage. Why not get married? You know you can make children beneficiaries in wills, right? OP says, here, spouses are included in inheritance, even if they're omitted from wills, and I plan on leaving everything to my kids. Ages, I'm 44, he's 53, we don't have any children together. So you didn't discuss trips that you could afford together? OP says, We did discuss the trips and I asked for input about where to stay and what we would do, but he never gave any, nor had any suggestions. I always just assumed he didn't like planning things. I would have likely still gone on the trips if he didn't want to. So if he said no, you would just go on the trip on your own? OP says, Yes, I would likely have still gone on the trip. That said, I would have been open to less expensive trips had he brought it up. Except for the past two trips, he never declined. I didn't go alone though, I went on one with some friends and the other with my daughter. In the comments, everyone sucks here. John should have ended your marriage way earlier. He can't keep up with your lifestyle and it would be horrible and very unfair to subject his children to a life where half of his family goes on fancy vacations regularly and the other stays home. He should have been honest way earlier before his savings drained and ended the marriage. You should have more awareness of your partner's struggles. How do you share a life with someone and you don't realize these things? OP says, he paid for things without any hint that he was struggling. I assume his attitude change was when things started to get really bad, and I did ask what was wrong, but he would just say that things were fine, or say he was upset about some little thing like the dishes not being put away. Before you were together, how often were you taking trips with your kids? OP says, I've always done about the same amount of trips every year, usually two with my kids. His kids mostly live with their mum, and mine will split time between me and their dad pretty equally. My eldest is in college now, though. I have a burning question. Did you ever ask him why he was acting that way before you decided that it was time for separation? 
because from the outside, you come off as the female stereotype that men don't have emotions, so there's no need to check. OP said, I did. He would always say that it was fine, or I would ask what's wrong, and he would get mad about the dishes not being put away or some other little thing. If you enjoy having him with you, maybe you could pay for him to go. OP says, If things were better, I might consider it, but at this point, I'm really not enjoying being around him anymore. I'm going to use this break to take some time to reevaluate things. It sounds like you don't love him at all. Why were you with him? Were you really together or just roommates with benefits? Why wouldn't you leave him anything in the will? How do you split daily life? OP says, With how things are now, it's hard to talk in present tense. I loved him. For me, it just feels like it would be wrong for my money and assets to go to anyone other than my kids, given, for him, well, I don't really need any inheritance, so it just makes the most sense for it to have gone to his children. For restaurants, we've always just taken turns paying. It's hard because I really feel like this is a situation where there's like, missing, missing reasons. The way that OP frames it, I really just want to say it's completely on him for not sharing that he was struggling with his wife, who's not actually his wife, it's just his pretend wife. Like, I don't understand how someone can be 53 and so dense as to put themselves close to bankruptcy. And that's why I think there's missing, missing reasons. I feel like OP's answering all these questions, but I'm still not getting as to what she did so that he felt he couldn't open up to her about that. Because I find it hard to believe that a 53-year-old at kids will just willingly dump all his money into her like that and sink his own ship. And not like dump all his money into her, just to keep up with the Joneses. It's just so stupid. And now, on to the updates. After reading all the comments on my first post, I realized I needed more time to think about things. I also thought with the situation how it was, it would be best that we spend the holidays apart to avoid any controversy. He wasn't a fan of the idea, but I eventually got him to agree to go. Last week, things settled down, so we met up to have a more detailed discussion about the state of his finances. A few more things were revealed. I found out that he had lost his job earlier this year and didn't tell me. He got a new job in October, but he went over four months without one while pretending that he still had one. During that time, he only got a small amount of money from unemployment, so he started putting everything on his credit cards. His new job doesn't pay as much as his old one, so he hasn't been able to pay more than the minimum towards his debts, which are now substantial. I feel like if he had just brought up all these issues earlier, this could have been avoided, or we could have had something worked out. Now I really just feel like I can't trust him. I can't trust him with money, and I can't trust him not to hide things from me. I just can't see going back and trying to make things work with him at this point. Since he doesn't have a place to take all their things, I've agreed to store their stuff in my garage until he gets more settled. Which means I won't be able to make as clean of a break as I would like right now, but for the most part, it's over. In the comments, Mountain Girl 60 says, I totally get how you're feeling. All I had to do was be honest with you and, well, yes, I get you're looking back and thinking, gosh, I guess I should have been able to figure out that if he made less, he probably really couldn't afford some of the trips. But as an adult, he literally could have just said that and told you to go ahead and have a good time. And then he would go on the next one with you. And then, to not even tell you, he lost his job and went for four months without one? All of this points to him having a pretty fragile ego, and that is not your problem, although, at the end, he sure was trying to make it your problem. Suggestion. I might, if you can afford it, I would literally pay for a storage unit for six months and have them move all of their stuff there. Prepay it for him and let him know that you have six months. That is more than enough time to find a place and get settled. And if he needs to go through things and get rid of some things so that they'll fit into his new place, it gives him time to do that as well. That way, you are still helping, but it doesn't involve continued contact of any kind because you're storing their stuff. It's a one-and-done sort of thing. Storage unit is the way to go. Do you really want him coming by every other day because he needs something? From your description, it sounds like he may start trying to guilt you into assuming some responsibility for his poor choices. Make a clean cut. That was exactly my thought. It is exactly what I did when my ex left. 
He left all of his stuff, apparently thinking I was going to keep it in the house or storage, and that was a definite no. So I told him I put it in storage, and if I recall, I think I paid for either three or six months and told him that it was up to him after that. Quotes, I found out that he had lost his job earlier and didn't tell me. I will never understand this logic. This is an immediate relationship killer, as it should be. I would never be able to trust a partner who goes this route. Someone else commented, and I agree. If you can afford it, I'd put their belongings in a storage unit. That way, he doesn't get complacent, and your garage isn't full of junk. Sometimes I watch a sitcom and think of how dumb the conflict is because a five-minute conversation can clear the air and make everything right. Then I read posts like this and realize some people would rather be miserable than communicate. My ex-husband would volunteer to handle the bills and other household things and then not pay them and not do them and hide it from me. We had the money, so it wasn't that. I never got an explanation out of him, even after the divorce. My dad would bring home his paycheck, back when it was still paper, and forget to tell my mum that he'd been paid. We were struggling and she would be doing laundry, and boom, there's a paycheck for $1,200 just crumbled up in his pocket, so she'd go and deposit it, pay the bills, and he'd get mad for some reason. I don't know if he thought that we were doing okay or he deluded himself into that, but my mum was always exasperated with him until when we finally got direct deposit and she was put on the account. I never understood that. This sounds like something my very ADHD father-in-law would have done. He's now in his mid-70s. Say he was being responsible and then do every step until the very last one. Okay, I don't think there's missing missing reasons anymore. I think those reasons are he is lacking a brain. He is lacking a spine. He is lacking a proper ego. Holy shit, it makes sense now. If other people do this as well, like the crumpled up note there, you would just set yourself on fire so that you could look as hot and as bright as everyone else around you. Way to go to this man for not having a retirement and possibly also losing the respect of his family and everyone around him in the meantime. But at least for a few minutes there, he looked good. That's, that's all that matters, right? Our next post is by user Throw RA Holding Hands, titled My 40 Male Wife 36 Was Seen Holding Hands with Another Man. So, my wife and I have been together for five years and got married last year. We definitely have our ups and downs, but we're generally happy. On Friday, she went out with people from her work for Christmas drinks and arrived home at around midnight absolutely hammered. She just said that she'd had a good time and went straight to bed. Yesterday, I got a message on Instagram from an anonymous account claiming to be one of her colleagues saying that she'd been flirting all night with one of the guys from the office, 44 male, and they'd left together at about 9 to walk to the train station. The colleague had a couple more drinks and then went to the train station herself and says she saw my wife walking hand in hand with a guy through the station at about 10.45. They didn't see her. Last night, I showed her the message and asked her for an explanation. She claimed she was so drunk she doesn't remember anything that happened after about 8pm. I asked if she went somewhere with a guy after they left the group, and she checked the location history on her phone, which confirmed that they had gone to a bar near the station for about an hour. They arrived at the station at 10.40. She gave me her phone and insisted that I check it, and there were no suspicious messages or anything. As far as I could tell, she doesn't have the guy's number in her phone, and they're not following each other on Instagram or friends on Facebook. I asked if she was flirting with him, and she admitted that she was talking mostly to him all night, but that's just because he's the only person in her office that she has anything in common with, and that they're just friends and it wasn't flirting. She mentioned this guy to me before, and said how much they have in common. I asked if they were holding hands, and she said she doesn't remember, but she doesn't think so. She claims to know who sent the message and says that it's a woman in the office who hates her, although she doesn't know why. Today she's been in a terrible mood and we've not really spoken. So that's where we are. I'm not sure what to do. Is this as big a red flag as it seems to be? In the comments, okay but not okay says, There are a collection of issues here, but the terrible mood today seems a big one. The information you received is largely correct. 
it looks a bit fishy, and instead of reassurance, she's in retaliation mode, no doubt focusing on her office rival. She should be apologizing and doing what she can to defuse the situation. Getting so drunk that you can't recall, and focusing on a particular man and going off privately with him, I wonder what she would feel if this was something that you had done. Tell her to lose the attitude and figure out how she plans to sort this out. OP should really focus on this advice. She voluntarily gave up her phone for examination. Unless she had a second cell phone, chances are that she isn't having an affair. OP should check her car for it. If there is no affair, she should at least be attracted to him to get a point where she is holding hands with him. That combined with the fact that she isn't going into crisis mode, but is generally just pissed at her colleague, points to the fact that she is a shitty partner. Not necessarily a cheater, but a very shitty partner nevertheless. Not having an affair doesn't mean she didn't fool around with a guy. Lots of people have sex or make out with someone, and don't have a text trail they leave behind. First off, ask yourself what 36-year-old gets blackout drunk at an office party by 8pm. That's a very thin defense against some pretty hard evidence. Are you sure that the bar they went to isn't next to his apartment? Yes, this. Think about it. Who goes to a work party and gets blackout drunk in the first place? This just doesn't add up. I just had a huge holiday office party. I stayed till the end last year, and I can confirm that multiple people were absolutely smashed. I only stayed a bit this year, but the majority of people didn't show up to work the next day. Happened at my last job as well. People were falling down the stairs they were so drunk. I work in a corporate setting too. It doesn't excuse cheating or flirting, but work parties always have those people that don't know when to stop drinking or boundaries. So she was too drunk to remember anything for four hours, yet was still capable of getting herself home? If nothing had happened, I feel like her answer would have been, what? No. No, I didn't do that. Instead of, um, well I don't remember. Yes, I was talking to him a lot. Yes, we went to a bar alone, but nothing happened. I don't remember anything, but I definitely remember that nothing happened. Somehow that woman's out to get me. Now I'm gonna sulk. And... Oof, that's not the answer you want to hear. And now, on to the updates. Sam came home from work on Monday and casually said that she'd spoken with a guy, Tom, and he'd confirmed that they hadn't held hands. They'd just been walking arm in arm because she was drunk and wearing heels. I asked why her colleague, Helen, would make an Instagram account, track me down, and message me saying that they'd held hands if it wasn't true. She said Helen is basically in love with Tom and made a pass at him just after his divorce, but he rejected her. I asked why Helen would feel threatened by her. She said because her and Tom are friends and Helen's a crazy, jealous bichacho, as evidenced by the Instagram message. I asked why she went for a drink, just her and Tom. She said that according to Tom, they walked past the bar with an amazing live band playing, so they stopped in for a drink. Her only regret was doing too many shots too early and getting shit-faced. The next day she went shopping after work and came home with a new dress. I asked what the occasion was and she said her work Christmas party. Last week was just drinks with people from her office. The company Christmas party is on Friday. Apparently she'd mentioned this. I hardly slept that night. The next day I decided to reply to the Instagram message to get some more info. I asked... Do you think anything's going on with them? Helen, I assume, quickly replied with a long message saying that they flirt at work and everyone has noticed. Apparently Sam was going to be let go, but Tom put in a good word so she kept her job. Tom protects her in the office and will constantly defend her. She also said that Sam bitches about me to the whole office and it's clear that we don't have a happy marriage. I asked if she was going to go to the Christmas party and she said she was. She said she'd update me if anything happened. Sam finished work early on Friday, so she'd have time to get ready. She looked amazing, and I really didn't want her to go, but I felt like I couldn't say anything. I got an Instagram message about midnight, saying that Sam and Tom hadn't interacted at the party, but the people from the office had decided to leave and go to a different bar. They all left just before 11, and were at the new bar by 10 past. Sam and Tom turned up just before midnight. Sam arrived home at about 2am, not quite as drunk as last time, and went straight to sleep. I pretended to be fast asleep. 
I looked at location history on her phone. After leaving the venue, she'd taken a three-mile detour to a residential street, stayed for half an hour, and then gone to the bar. I sent the address to Helen, and she didn't reply until the next morning when she said that it was Tom's house. When Sam woke up, I just asked her straight out if she cheated on me with Tom last night. She angrily denied it. I told her that I knew she'd been to Tom's house. She accused me of spying on her, called me controlling, said she was going to stay with her sister. I demanded an explanation, and she said she went to his house so they could smoke a joint before heading to the bar. Then she stormed out. She wouldn't reply to my messages or answer my calls all day on Sunday. I called her sister who said she hadn't seen her, but she texted me later that she'd spoken to Sam and she was okay. She came home yesterday morning. I asked where she'd been, and she just said she couldn't do this anymore and wants a divorce. She went to start packing some clothes while I tried to get her to talk to me. I asked if she was leaving me for Tom. She once again denied anything inappropriate had happened between them, but said my jealousy was the final straw. It's clear that I don't trust her. I'm controlling. I take her for granted. She's deeply unhappy and has been for a while. So she's gone. It looks like I'll be spending my first Christmas alone. I have no idea if she was telling the truth or if it was an affair, but weirdly, I'm not feeling too bad today. So maybe this is for the best. In the comments, Chris Lives in Alaska says, She did the hard part for you. She is 100% full of shit. Best of luck to you this holiday season. I get the possibility of a jealous co-worker making up a story to get someone in trouble like she claimed, but when your spouse brings that to your attention, you'd think that it'll be smart maybe not to go to the guy's house alone within a week. She knew the relationship was coming to an end, and she didn't care. Also, the not talking to each other at the party, but leaving and showing up together over an hour later, is suspicious as far. Don't take her back when real life kicks back in. Change the locks immediately and contact a lawyer today. This OP, if you own the home that she left, then after two weeks, file a vacancy notification in her name. File for divorce today and have her served at work. If you live in a state where alienation of affection is, file for this also and have Tom served. Also, send her the information of her HR department that a supervisor is having an affair with your wife and protecting her. Have this documentation sent to their HR department on this day also. It will create a gigantic shit show. On the day that she's served, call her family, your family, and your friends. Let them know that you filed for divorce, why you filed, and name Tom. Don't take any calls from her. And lastly, post on your social media. It sucks being cheated on, tagging her. Here's what happened when she left OP. And I'm not saying this to add to your heartache, but to help you moved on. She left your place and went to Tom's, and they had sex multiple times, and she was euphoric afterwards. She will eventually come down from that initial high and reach back out. Do not take the bait and just respond, Anything you want to say to me, you can say to my attorney. And now on to the final update. Once she was gone, Sam blocked me on all her social media and refused to return my messages or answer my calls. I ended up traveling to the other side of the country to spend Christmas with my parents. On Christmas Eve, Sam came home and took more of her stuff. I watched her on our security cameras. I tried phoning her, but she ignored my calls. Christmas wasn't great, and my parents were both shocked and in denial about what had happened. They had no idea that we were having issues, and insisted Sam would come to her senses and come home. Eventually, I just said that she'd met someone else. I returned home on the 27th. I'd been getting sporadic updates from Sam's sister, just letting me know that she's alright, but without any details. Before all this happened, we'd made plans to spend New Year's at Sam's favorite bar in the city. I went on my own, but she didn't show up. On Tuesday night, I received an Instagram message from Helen saying that Sam and Tom had arrived at work together in Tom's car. I didn't bother replying. On Wednesday night, she sent another message saying Sam was poisoning the office against her and that Tom was pushing upper management to transfer her to another office or get rid of her. She begged me to do something. I texted Sam and said that we needed to talk, but she didn't reply. 
So the next day, I called her work switchboard, gave a fake name, and got put through. I could tell that she wasn't happy to hear my voice, but she agreed to meet up after work at a local pub and talk. I got there early and she arrived 25 minutes late. She apologized for ignoring my calls and said she still cares about me and wants to end things on good terms. I said, just tell me the truth. She promised me that she wasn't having an affair with Tom and that they were just friends. She admitted that they talk a lot in the office, but insisted that it wasn't an emotional affair. She understands why I was suspicious after the Instagram message, but said that I should have accepted her denial and trusted her. She has a lot of male friends, but she felt like she couldn't hang out with them because I'd get jealous. I'd pointed out that I've never told her not to hang out with anyone, but she said that I'd be in a mood whenever she'd hang out with a guy friend. She feels like we only got married to try and fix a relationship that was already broken. Our conversations have devolved into small talk, and we've drifted apart. I said I heard that she and Tom had arrived at work together. Sam said she went to Tom's after I accused her of cheating and knew that it was over between us. They'd spent the weekend together and agreed that they'd make a better couple than we did. She needed me to know that nothing happened between them until after she'd told me that she wanted a divorce, and now they were together, and she wanted me to hear it from her before I saw it on social media. Tom was waiting outside for her in the car. All I could do was stand up and walk out. Sam texted me saying she knew I was upset, but not to do anything stupid. I blocked her number. I'm not gonna lie, it was a rough night. The next day, I was just numb. I didn't really do much. Over the weekend, I dug out our marriage certificates so I can start divorce proceedings. I've no idea what to say to Helen, so I haven't replied. I think the plan now is to try and find a new job closer to my hometown. I moved across the country to live with Sam, and I've never really felt settled here. I don't want to run into her and Tom around town. Luckily, we rent. This will probably be my last update until something miraculous happens, so thanks for reading. In the comments, Marambinian says, Why do people cheat and happily ignore the fact that their new relationship is built on the funeral pyre of someone else's life? I'll never understand it. If you run into my ex-wife, feel free to ask her. My ex-husband would be good to ask as well. My ex and his now former friend's ex would also be good candidates for asking. I think my ex might be involved in that one. She lied to me that she was pregnant to get me to move abroad with her. And after we broke up, I'm chilling at a cafe when a woman walks up to me and says that she's sorry, but that her ex-husband, the father of three kids, and my ex had been having an affair. I later discovered that so had my ex and ex-best friends. Maybe I'm the him. I have a friend. He cheated on his wife and left her for the new woman. He then cheated on the new woman, who was shocked that he would do that, and left her for someone else, and same thing happened again. He recently got remarried to a woman that he cheated on his last girlfriend with, and she thinks that it won't happen to her. I really, really wonder how bad people keep getting into relationships so easily. Seems like more easily than good people. Well, that's why. They aren't making sure that they're getting into good, healthy relationships. Even in the story, it seems like OP's wife went from an unhappy, dishonest relationship to a happy for now but still dishonest relationship, and unless she and her new partner do a lot of work together and on their own, it won't end well. A lot of people are saying that if they cheat with you, they will cheat on you, which I don't think is always true. But I do believe that someone with a pattern of cheating will repeat it unless they figure out why they keep effing up and work to change that behavior. That is hard work that lots of people won't do, but this also means that they find new relationships pretty quickly because they're willing to start obviously unhealthy relationships. Easily getting into many relationships is not always a good thing. For lots of people, it's a sign that they're bad at picking relationships. Ah, the classic, he's just a friend and I've never thought of him that way and you're just insecure, into the instant dating two days after the breakup. A tale as old as time. It's pretty funny too, because when I've been around friends I don't think of romantically, and there's really nothing there, we aren't dating less than a week after either of us had a breakup. It's wild how that works, huh? 
And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!